Hello, this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about a recent report in JAMA Cardiology on atrial fibrillation, sex differences, modifiable risk factors. We looked at these questions in our vitamin D and omega-3 trial, VITAL, in an ancillary study called Vital Rhythm, led by Dr. Christine Albert at Cedars-Sinai, and this particular project was led by Dr. Hassan Siddiqui at Vanderbilt. Now, as you know, Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia in the world, and it's burgeoning in numbers, primarily due to the aging of the population. It's also a major cause of stroke, heart failure, and cardiovascular mortality. Although women are known to have lower rates of AF than men, they're also known to have a higher risk of cardiovascular complications and sequelae, such as higher risk of stroke and CVD mortality. Therefore, we thought that understanding sex differences in risk and modifiable uh, risk factors for AF that could reduce the burden of disease uh, would be important. And it's known that greater height is a risk factor for, the, for AF, but the extent to which it explains the differences in AF risk between um, men and women isn't really known. And uh, so we looked at these questions in the VITAL cohort. Um, VITAL has more than 25,000 participants. It's a large, diverse co nationwide cohort. Um, the about 51% of women and all are age 50 and older. Uh, the mean age is 67. And um, they're all free of known cardi clinical cardiovascular disease at the start of the study. And the AF reports were confirmed by medical records and also um, supplemented by uh, Medicare CMS linkage for um, fuller ascertainment of outcomes. We had 900 incident cases of AF in the study. And um, we did see that um, women were less likely to be diagnosed with AF. They had 32% lower risk, strongly uh, statistically significant compared to men with a P less than 0 0.001. Women were also um, more likely to be symptomatic, about 77% in women versus 63% of men having symptoms prior to it or at diagnosis. Now, um, it was very interesting that adjustment for height did eliminate this lower risk of AF in women compared to men. So after accounting for height, there was not only no, no reduction in risk of AF among the women, there was actually a reversal of the association so that there was a slightly higher risk of AF in the women. And other risk factors for AF in the cohort included, included of course, older age, higher body mass index, hypertension, um, higher consumption of alcohol. We did not see an association or lower um, or a, a, an association between diabetes and higher risk. We also saw no clear association with physical activity, although that has higher, uh, very strenuous physical activity um, has been linked to AF in, in some other studies. We looked at the interventions, the vitamin D, 2,000 I use a day, and the omega-3s, one gram a day, EPA, DHA, and found no association. Although um, some other studies have seen increased risk of AF with higher doses of the marine omega-3s, uh, higher than one gram a day, and certainly um, at doses of four grams a day. So overall, the findings highlight um, the fact that many of the risk factors for AF do seem to be modifiable, and it is really important to identify and, and try to reduce uh, these risk factors in order to uh, reduce the burden of AF. And this may be particularly important in women in that um, women are more likely to have stroke and cardiovascular mortality in these adverse cardiovascular outcomes with AF. Thank you so much for your attention. This is Joanne Manson.